Hey everybody, this is my 29 gallon miscellaneous tank and I just got done doing a big water change. I got the glass wiped down, did the filter, and I added a bunch of crushed up eggshells. If you see all that white stuff down at the bottom of the tank, that's exactly what that is. Now, I just crushed it up small enough that it'll eventually work its way down into the substrate and we won't be able to see it anymore. But for the purpose of this video, I wanted to just leave it out there so you could see exactly what I was talking about. Um, that is four regular old hen's eggs for my breakfast this morning. And I just used my fingers and crushed them up as small as I could. I threw away as much of the membrane as I could. And of course, I rinsed them off before I started to get rid of as much of the egg material as I could. All I'm really looking for uh, is the eggshell itself. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to add calcium and magnesium. And I'll even get some potassium in there uh, with the eggshells because eggshells are all full of good stuff. So I read an article this evening and I found it kind of curious. It was an article about adding eggshells to our gardens and whether or not that was beneficial for our plants and whether it was good to add calcium to the soil for the plants. And of course plants do need calcium and they need potassium and they need magnesium, but do eggshells give it to them was the topic of this article. And the article was basically saying no that the eggshells in the garden is a myth and I found it really interesting that while he was disputing that these eggshells had any value he was explaining that they do and he started by saying first of all eggshells don't dissolve in water and he then went on to explain he did an experiment where he put an eggshell in water uh, for 24 hours and then he checked the mineral content of the water and it turns out that the water's mineral content, the calcium, only increased by 4 milligrams. Now, according to him, the egg he used contained 2,000 milligrams of calcium. So that was only a 0.2% increase in calcium in 24 hours. So that right there says it is dissolving into the water. I mean, no, it's not dissolving like a sugar cube, but at that ratio, that eggshell would be completely dissolved in 500 days. That's less than a year and a half. So if an eggshell can completely vanish in water in a year and a half, that tells me it's dissolving into water. It also tells me it's dissolving into water fairly slowly. The four milligrams in one night you know, does it dissolve four milligrams every day, every 24 hours? Is it adding four more milligrams of calcium? I don't know, maybe, probably, if you want to look at it steady like that. I've got four eggshells in here, so that means I'd be adding 16 milligrams of calcium in a 29-gallon tank on a daily basis. That would take a very long time for me to begin to significantly shift the water hardness or anything like that. I'm not adding a lot of calcium, magnesium, or potassium, but I am adding some. And that's all I want to do. I'll get into why I want to add some to my water uh, at a later date. I just want to shoot this video about whether or not eggshells will actually provide all of this stuff. Now, I am going to do some further testing. Um, I'm going to test my pH and the water hardness in this tank and everything, and we'll see if it changes over time. My preliminary testing that I've done on other tanks indicates that it will not. But this is the only thing I've added to this tank is these eggshells. I have not added any of the um, mineral stones that I've put in some of my other tanks, and I've not added any of the um, poultry grit. This is just eggshells in this tank. So the guy goes on to explain how, you know, the eggshells don't dissolve in water, even though he explains how they dissolve in water. And then he went on to explain how they don't really dissolve in your garden. And that basically means if you just throw them on the ground, you know, of course they're not. But they will break down in compost if they're composted properly. And he pointed out that the real problem with them, and I don't know why he was saying this is a problem, but apparently the problem with them is that because they are calcium-based, they don't dissolve in alkaline soil. They will only dissolve into acidic soil. So once your soil's pH rises above 
6.8, the eggshells stop dissolving into your soil, so you won't be adding any calcium to your soil anymore. Now, fair enough for the purposes of that argument, if we're talking about adding calcium for our plants, if you've got alkaline soil, then no, your eggshells are not going to dissolve into your alkaline soil. If you've got acidic soil, however, whether you're using the eggshells to add nutrients or not, the eggshells are effectively what he was describing as a very good buffer. If you don't want your pH to drop below 6.8, the eggshells will prevent that. The moment you start getting more hydrogen ions and the, the water becomes a little more acidic, the eggshells begin dissolving. If I were to do a big water change and put a lot of like more acidy water in the tank and I was really to knock the pH down to 6.5 all of a sudden, those eggshells would help bring it right back up to at least 6.8 or more. So without really jacking my pH way up and without really changing my water's hardness, the eggshells are actually just going to add a little gentle dose of calcium that's going to steadily be released into the tank. The same holds true for magnesium and the potassium. And it's going to provide me with the buffering capacity of all of the, you know, aforementioned uh, minerals that are going to be released into the water. So all around, reading this article about why it's pointless to put eggshells in your garden gave me even more confidence at putting these eggshells into my fish tank. So the reason I'm doing it in this tank, well, I, I, again, I said I'm going to do a video. I'm going to talk a little bit more about this, why I want to uh, mineralize my tanks a little more. I have very, very soft water, and we can get into details about it later, but I've got really, really soft water, and I've always suspected that my um, problems with keeping some fish alive was that I had too many sodium ions in the water and now I tend to believe that it's actually not too much sodium ions but it's actually a lack of other uh, mineral ions such as the calcium, magnesium, and potassium. So without them being in my water I don't think I'm going to have any luck getting another rubber lip or rubber lip type you know, small pleco in this tank, and I really need one. I had one in here not long ago, and it's apparently dead because the glass before the water change was really grungy, and you can see the grunge all over everything in the tank. Um, once fish adapt to my water, they seem to be okay for a fairly long period of time. I did have a rubber lip that was in this tank for about five years, and it died, and I've not been able to get one to last more than a couple of months in this tank, and I suspect it's because because I've just got zero mineral content in the water and I think by adding these eggshells while I've got a clown pleco in quarantine right now by the time it comes out of quarantine my slightly acidic water that's in this tank now or it should be slightly acidic coming out of my tap we just did the water change there uh, again I haven't tested the pH or the water hardness or anything we'll get to that later but Regardless, I should be putting some mineral ions into the water, and by the time that clown pleco comes out of quarantine, it should be able to go in this tank, and then hopefully over time, it will be able to adapt to my water more easily, and we'll be able to get it in here for a long period of time, and we'll get the tank nice and cleaned up, and everything will look good. So make sure you're subscribed and you won't miss the videos I've got coming up where I'm going to talk about why I want to do all this remineralization or mineralization of my tanks and I'm also going to talk more about um, total dissolved solid meters, electrical conductivity meters, uh, oxygen redox potential and all that stuff I've been reading up on it and again I'm not going to have to go into a ton of detail about it because I only think we really need to go over the basics of it and that'll be more than enough for us to go on with so again make sure you're subscribed and you won't miss any of that uh, or anything else i got coming up you never know what it is going to be with me so don't forget this one here's my 29 gallon miscellaneous tank thanks for watching this one and i'll see you real soon on the next one